The Nazis used the most modern propaganda techniques available to them, from film to fashion. They were selling a product. As a cultural historian, I want to know what people wear and why they wear it. Because what we wear is a poster of who we are. That's what makes it so powerful. Save your kisses, pass them around. You'll find my reasoning is logically. When we think of Hugo Boss, do not think of the company today. During the Nazi time, Hugo Ferdinand Boss was a producer of Nazi uniforms. And in 1945, Hugo was arrested. The Americans put these people on trial. In his case, and in most of those cases, they were usually denazified, as it was called, to ensure the occupiers that, uh, whether they were businessmen or you know ordinary citizens, he had to pay a fee, 100,000 Reichsmark, and so really didn't have to pay much for dressing the Nazis. Hugo Boss died shortly after the war in 1947. Many people project their image of the company nowadays back into the 1930s and 1940s. Hugo Boss was back then a completely different company. His daughter married a man, Eugen Holy. Eugen Holy and his two sons, they created a major success story, the Hugo Boss company we know today. And they discovered how cool the name Hugo Boss sounds, that it works perfectly as a brand. Many companies became involved with the Nazis and Hugo Boss for a long time remained silent about this history during the Nazi years. And in the late 1990s, when it became known that the company produced SS uniforms, and they employed around 150 forced laborers. Hugo Boss couldn't remain silent. Hugo Boss technically sells clothes, but it's not the most important thing they sell. I think Hugo Boss sells the brand Hugo Boss. The interesting thing about Hugo Boss is that he has this uh, cool name, but he was a little bit obese, he had a moustache and was always wearing this uh, hunting outfit. He was born in the small town in southern Germany, Metzingen. He did not have a very successful career. He started an apprenticeship and didn't finish it. And then decided to found his own tailor company in 1924. Hugo Boss uh, was officially no tailor at all. He hadn't anything to do with fashion. No distinctive designs whatsoever. He did not make the fashion magazines in the 1920s. In my own research, I started looking at women's magazines that were produced in Nazi Germany because I was really interested to know if Nazism showed up in those magazines. So I assume that most of the fashion that I'm seeing in the magazines are French, and it turns out they're not. They're Berlin. Germany was very modern. In the 1920s, Berlin made as much money on fashion as Paris did. But then Germany was hit really hard by the Great Depression. And in 1931, uh, a Hugo Boss company went bankrupt. And there is a turn in the history of the company because in 1931, Hugo Boss uh, became a member of the Nazi party. And this finally saved his company. Tailoring for the party became his main business. From 1937 on, his only business were uniforms. They produced all kinds of Nazi uniforms. The Nazis created a huge demand for uniforms. You have many organizations 
and all this organization had uh, their own uniforms. To create a uniform, you don't need a state organization to do that. You can buy it from companies like Hugo Boss, and Hugo Boss was not the only one. When you have a totalitarian state, it opens up new possibilities. You can make big deals, contracts which are huge. A lot of companies collaborate with the regime. There are a number of Hugo Bosses, I guess you could say, because Hitler promised not just that he would make Germany great again, but that he would bring jobs back to Germany, that he would revive the industries in Germany. The story is quite clear, I think. It was a success story, but the success based on his cooperation with the Nazi party. The Nazis used the most modern propaganda techniques available to them. From film to fashion, they were selling a product. Successfully made Nazism an aesthetic, a dangerously beautiful one, filled with marches and bodies wearing uniforms that were constructed as protection for war. They strived really to have a uniformity of the society according to their goals and according to their ideas. Hugo Boss definitely did not design these uniforms. He was just a commission tailor and he produced uniforms for the Nazi party and for the army. But he was not a designer. I, he did not even have the capability to design those uniforms. They advertise in the SS newspaper, promoting their uniforms. And there was a lot of advertising for Hugo Boss uniforms. Especially for the SS, the design of the uniforms was very important because Outer appearance was very important for them. Even when you have a totalitarian state where clothing is used to signal that everyone is the same. That's not how we humans work, is it? It's like we always want to make differences. We always want to mark status. We always want to know where we stand in relation to, you know, our neighbor. Brown was the color of the party, but not the color of the SS. The SS always were black. They were uh, responsible for the protection of Hitler. And the SS were very invested in promoting the idea that they were the aristocracy of Nazi Germany. Himmler, as uh, the leader of the SS, he was not too smart, but he had a very good instinct for public appearance and uh, how to spread different feelings. The design of the uniforms was important for Hitler and Himmler. And they decided about this uh, in personal conversations. And so the design of uniforms is all part of this SS corporate identity. Himmler start really constructing new traditions and constructing new narratives. All these ideas are part of um, a high fashion uniform with this function to build up the narrative connected to the SS. The Nazis have this very modern face that's very stylish, very fashionable. Part of that had to do with the fact that the the top-level Nazis uh, were not stylish or fashionable. They wanted to be accepted. They wanted to be fashionable. So you have propaganda minister Goebbels who spends a fortune on his clothes. The Nazis understand 
that looking stylish to the outside world sends a message. This analogy of black SS uniforms and black business suits contributes to this uh, perfectly working Hugo Boss Nazi story. From an aesthetic point of view, there is obviously something into it. When you wear black business suits, you want to show something. It's like a shining armor of modern capitalism. I mean, suits still signify a kind of stern uh, professionalism or a kind of remove. A fascination for uniforms comes from the desire to reduce complexity and to make things kind of strong and simple. With uniforms, you lose your identity. You become a member of a collectivity. Uniformity has become a state of mind. They connect you to a particular group. If you're wearing uniform, this is your identity.